And this Ivy League example of intellectually justified fascism is the perfect classroom lesson about exactly where the left wants to take America. Total and unquestioned subservience to your new self-proclaimed woke masters. Why? Because of course they care more about you than you do yourself. And because it justifies their tyranny. You know, I really hope they sleep well at night comforted by their immense concern for you. And if this past year is any indication, it looks like the American sheeple are buying it. But what about the Brown University baseball team? Are they buying it? Here to ponder these ominous questions are uh, six players on the canceled Brown baseball team right here in Providence, Rhode Island. Let's find out if they're buying the we care so much for you that it's okay to cancel your season line that the Ivy League is trying to sell them. So let's bring in our guests today from the Brown University baseball team, and let's let's uh, let's activate their videos and microphones. Let's uh, welcome uh, Captain uh, 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 Colin Garner. Colin, say hello. Well, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? It's best if you do it yourself. Give us your um, name, where you're from, your class, and what position you play in the baseball team. Go ahead, guys. Start with Colin. Yeah. Um, so my name is Colin Garner. I'm Cap captain on the team or co-captain um, starting pitcher um, I'm majoring in economics and I'm from uh, South Texas South Texas. Texas good good Ryan I'm Ryan Fish I'm a senior pitcher I'm from Houston Texas so I'm only a couple of hours away from him. two good old Texas boys there huh okay uh, Ryan Ryan uh, go ahead yep okay. I'm Jake Burley. I'm a sophomore catcher, and I'm uh, from Hollister, California. Okay. Uh, I'm Ray Sass. I'm a sophomore infielder from uh, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, I love Nashville. I'm uh, sorry, I said Ryan. I meant Ray. Uh, I love Nashville. Yeah, I went to see my son who played for URI when they played Vanderbilt down there. It was great. All right, let's go to Zach. Hi, I'm Zach Fogel. I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm a junior left-handed pitcher. From Providence? Where'd you go to high school? Well, I'm originally from Cumberland, but now in Providence, uh, I went to Cumberland High School. Oh, that's great. Okay, and Charlie? <clears throat> I'm Charlie Bielenson. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I'm a junior pitcher. Good. Well, welcome, guys. Thanks for taking time to appear today. Uh, Colin, as captain, let, let me start with you. Um, pretty much every other college Division I conference is playing ball. They probably started their workouts. Many of them are probably on their southern trips right now. How does it make you and your teammates feel to know that you're the only Division One conference that's not taking the field right now? Um, yeah, it's it's upsetting for us, especially for all the work we did and um, the extra precautions we had to take this year, um, specifically. But you know, it's just kind of disheartening for us. Are, are you guys anyone? Are you guys um, angry? Or just taking it and, you know, this is life and, you know, this is how, how we got to deal with this. I mean, I would definitely say I'm angry. Especially since, you know, this past weekend, we watched countless teams play uh, their first games. With no masks on. Um, I had a teammate from the summer. He went he goes to Ole Miss. He hopped on a plane, flew to Texas, played in the Rangers Stadium with 12,000 fans. You know, it's definitely hard to watch. Now, Jake, you um... – that's Jake who was just speaking, right? Yeah. You put out a tweet on that that got that got quite a, a little bit of play. Almost every Division One band you know, was showing this to our fans. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, and you were retweeting. It looks like you were quite a bit jealous of this uh, California baseball player who actually is taking the field to stop uh, their season. You said this is why we are so upset. Do better. Who who was that message um, geared towards? Um, the Ivy League, the Ivy League presidents who made the decision. Um, I think what's even more upsetting than uh, how every other team is playing is the fact on how they announced their decision to cancel the season. I mean, it was, it was a tweet, and we had no idea it was even coming out. Uh, there was just rumors um, the night before that there, there was a meeting and this decision might be made. We were so, not so, so it's, the so it's not like they went to you guys and other athletes at Brown and across the league and sat down and said, listen, you know, we, you know, can, can we work out a way to do this? You know, what do you guys think? They, they just on their own without any input from you guys, just boom, canceled it. Who, who wants to comment on that? 
it, it was tough that definitely we weren't even included in the decision or and as as jake said like we found out in a tweet like our email that we received from our ad administrators came three minutes after the tweet was released so just the fact that we weren't even mentioned in the thought process in the decision was was tough for us to hear well zach just so happens zach i'm also sharing a tweet i saw of yours um where you say you know that that, that was really to you by not being included was a sign of disrespect I mean, listen, yes, you guys are smart guys. You're Ivy League, smart guys, great athletes, well-rounded young men. And, uh, and you feel that, does everyone agree that, that the, the league and the Council of Presidents has disrespected your guys' input on this? Well, Mike, like when I think of other professional sports leagues like the NFL and the MLB, they have collective bargaining agreements. They have players unions that meet with the owners of the teams and they strike a deal. And we're NCAA athletes, so we don't have a union. But I felt like we had very little input on this decision. I think if they reached out to us, it would have been very clear. We just want to play a season. I mean, I could follow whatever rules they set, any condition for it, just to play. I lost two seasons now. And it's, it just feels like it's out of my hands. The decision was made for me. We're, we're again, anyone answer who would like to, or someone who hasn't spoken yet. Um, we're, I mean, before the decision came down last week, what was your expectation? Was your expectation that you were, they, they were going to find a way to, to play this year? Because we know you had been practicing under some very strict uh, protocols and circumstances, but was the expectation that they were going to, you were going to be allowed to play given, you know, given the drop we've seen nationally in, in the, the case? I mean, the expectation that we had was basically to have conference play. Like we wanted to be able to, at the very least, play our conference rivals, be able to have this Ivy League championship caliber season to really be able to compete ultimately in the regional and then hopefully the College World Series. And to our understanding, like, we were going to have that or providing we followed protocol and everything like that. So I imagine, you know, Charlie, may, maybe you can weigh in here, you know, um, and I imagine you know, I'm going to put up a, a, a quote from a, a tweet. Uh, I don't know if it's a tweet, but uh, something from your coach, uh, Grant Achilles, who, who apparently uh, wasn't happy either with, um, with what was going on. I, so I assume that expectation that you would be playing kind of was trickled down through your coach, right? Because he would be your contact to, to the uh, administration and the, and the president's council. Uh, was he as surprised as you guys were? And it must have hit you like a ton of bricks when that expectation was dashed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, from the beginning, like going into the semester, the Ivy League had told us like, the decision will be made. We'll see how the cases go. If, if we get to a certain point, then we'll okay the season. They let us all re-enroll for the- A certain point, did they define that? Well, that's the thing. They didn't really define what the numbers had to look like um, and to what extent like students on campus would have to be, stuff like that. And so they kind of just let us all re-enroll with the hope of, of a decision being made. But by the time, the like with the decision coming at this point in which our season wasn't even expected to start until um, April, in which vaccines would have rolled out at a much higher rate. Um, it just seems like either the decision was made too rash to do it this early, or that a decision had kind of already been made before we had um, enrolled in the first place for this spring semester. All right, but I mean, but it's, God, I'm just trying to put myself, you know, as a guy who played, you know, I played three years before I got drafted and at Harvard, and I, I just can't imagine you guys I mean especially what you just told me they told you if you get to some point you no know, apparently you guys have been practicing in the fall and with very strict code I assume you if you follow all the rules all the yeah. protocols and then they just and they don't define what that point is right they just leave it out there and then they just snatch it away from you mm -hmm. in a minute what what well, one of the things that we were able to infer about their decision was that you know the Ivy League executive director said that this didn't boil down to testing strategies or safety protocols. It seemed more to be about the fact that the campus itself wasn't ready to raise 
to a new level of allowing travel and allowing rival teams to visit the campus and play us and have all those players on the field, you know, two rosters on the field. So, so in other words, they were afraid of the woke reaction. Well, they wanted it to be so that everyone. That's my words. Those, you don't have to agree with it. They, they wanted everyone to enjoy those things before, you know, a specific group like athletes could have the privilege. Ooh, those, of those, those un, unintellectual scourge of athletes can't let you do first, right? I mean, listen, I suffered through the, this at, at the Ivy League myself, how, how many in, at the upper levels look down on us. All right, let me let me do some quick show of hands on this. Um, well, first of all, does anyone, raise your hand, does anyone agree with the decision that was made this year? Okay. Does anyone, how many of you agree with the shutdown last year? Last year. Last year. Everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we didn't know what we were dealing with then, and it was safe. Okay. Um, have any of you or any of your teammates, first, any of you guys ever tested positive for the coronavirus? Any of your teammates? You have had some teammates where they were they very well, sick. Not why we've been on campus, but I know that two guys in my class at least have had it at some point. Were they were they very sick? No, um, they just. Um, I think one guy said he had a headache, and then uh, the other guy lost the sense of smell for a while. Now we were talking off off air. Now raise your hand. How many of you guys have aspirations uh, still uh, that that your college baseball career might lead to a professional baseball career? So, you know, four or five of you. Okay. Um, now, it's obviously difficult to scout <laughs> you guys when you're not playing. Uh, but there were summer leagues. I didn't realize that some college summer leagues played last year. Did all of you, how, how many of you played in a summer league last year? Two. two. Okay. And, um, and, and did you notice there were scouts around? Uh, not to the point that it would have been in normal summer, for sure, especially since we only, like I said earlier, we only had three teams in our pod that we played over and over again. I right, see so you kind of had a pod like the NBA bubble or something like yeah. that kind of thing. It wasn't nearly a normal season. Okay. I, my league definitely had, there was a small presence at, at some games when some of the guys, like my league had a good presence of power five athletes in, on teams due to the lack of availability of summer leagues. Um, so at those games, there was a small handful of scouts, but it was very reduced. And even the amount of people at the games in general was so like maybe 5% of the amount. Uh, and, and in those summer league players. teams, is there any spread of the virus among the teammates? Uh, not sure. So, I mean, in your guys' view, you can, you can play this game and not spread the virus. But again, you brought up an interesting fact. Does everybody agree that this was less about medical spread of the virus and it was sort of more of a, a pretense of how it would look to have athletes you, you think it's more that kind of thing yeah absolutely yes wow that's interesting um how, how does how does that make you well how does that make you, how does that make you feel i just i feel like we, we all just want to play we, i would sanitize the ball every pitch to keep it safe so that we could play. I'd be right, willing to good, do good question. Would you guys play under strict masking and distancing, spread out your dugout? Yes, oh, absolutely. And, and sanitizing absolutely. balls. You, 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 you'd you all play under those conditions? Yeah. I would triple mask and ride in the bus and sanitize my hands every five minutes to travel safely. You know, I would, just, Let me ask the opposite. How many of you play if it was just like the old days? There were no restrictions. How many of you would feel safe enough playing the old way? Most of you. Okay. okay. I would so feel either totally, way, you just totally want to play distant. ball, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Say, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Even Charlie, with, what were you saying? I would, I would say I would feel safe enough. Would I think it's necessarily the right decision? No. I think there still should be some restrictions, especially when it comes to outside presence, because a lot like the whole Ivy League decision um, seem to come down to like blanket standards that they had for all students. So if, well, what that meant, like restricting travel of all students and that includes athletes. So that meant we couldn't play, but, um, I think it was just those kind of standards and the refusal to unblanket everyone, even if like some sectors could 
have played. Um, I get like some clubs could participate in things, but they just refuse to open up to um, specific groups without opening up to the whole general public. As All right, whole. since we're comparing at since since you guys have made the interesting point that they're comparing, you know, we don't want to give privileges to athletes and not the rest of the Brown University community. Is that in essence true, or is there some ask part of the Brown University community that is allowed to meet, that is allowed to congregate or travel or anything? Not that I know of. I know that they were starting to allow people to go to 20 person, like um, in person classes with obviously masks and other uh, safety measures in place. Um, but all of those would also occur indoors um, and in direct contact with professors and um, TAs and stuff like that. Um, and I feel like if anything, those are equally or more unsafe than it would be for us to participate in which, I mean, there's plenty of restrictions. Like you didn't even necessarily, we, we could have played um, games where we just travel to a site, um, uh, like neutral site games in which we probably wouldn't even necessarily have to bring our whole rosters and I'm sure all of us after a traveling day would be perfectly fine to quarantine until our next game. Um, we all are taking, I, I don't know of really anyone on our team who's taking any classes in person. So we are, we would say. Right, so at least they're being consistent, you think, with, even though you might disagree with the approach, at least mm -hmm. they're being consistent with that approach? Yeah, right. Yeah. I'd right. Be if, if playing meant that I had some extra privilege being able to travel and whatnot, I'd be willing to give up doing in-person classes or doing, having other privileges if it meant, you know, that you play, you know, just whatever, however we can make a deal. You know? um, NCAA eligibility. Um, I assume, I mean, Ivy Leagues usually don't allow post-grad um, athletes like other conferences do, but are any of you, I mean, I don't even know if it's being allowed. Is it, it, is it allowed? And would any of you consider maybe an extra year in, in college, extend your education so you could, you could claw back some of the playing time you've missed? How many of you would consider that? Okay. Got four years left, I plan to use them all. So. Okay. Are, and, and do you know, is that, I mean, after last year, did they, did they, are, are they giving some allowances back for your eligibility? After last year, everyone got uh, like a blanket year. Where everyone okay. got another year. But given this year, it's a little different since we're the only people who aren't oh, yeah, having right. a season. Right. Kind of still kind of up, up in the air. We definitely, I think, are getting a year of eligibility back. But Well, that's right. So last year, everybody in the NCAA got the year. This year, yeah. it would be just Ivy League. So it would have to be a special consideration. Oh, boy. Exactly. That, that, Ivy League did, though, pass a waiver for uh, seniors this year that you could play in a post-grad at your institution that you're still at. So like Ryan and I could, okay, we'd have to apply for a master's program at Brown and obviously get in on our own standing. Um, and if we got accepted, we could play as a graduate student in the Ivy League, but we couldn't like switch to another Ivy League school and play as a grad student there. You'd have to stay at your own institution. Huh. All and right. that came out, that came out just a, I don't know, maybe a week or two yeah. before the decision. And that was kind of like a smoking gun that, you know, their head is probably going towards not letting us play this year. So how are you guys going to be this year? Are we going to kick Harvard's butts or what? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, um, I mentioned to you guys off air um, that my dad was the baseball coach at Brown for 10 years during the 1980s. And um, he would like you to know that he uh, – he, Strongly supports your point of view, disagrees with the decision of the league. Uh, your coach, um, uh, Grant Achilles, let's go back and put up that tweet again um, that, that he put out or his letter uh, that was put out. And he says, I struggle to believe that our league's leadership ever legitimately intended for spring sports to return to competition. And he also goes on to mention the lack of transparency. What do you think about his statement and let me ask overall if you think he has stood up uh, for, for you guys during this process. I definitely uh, think he's been out, um, stood up for us. And especially in that tweet, lack of transparency, that was definitely like a, a theme we saw throughout the fall and the spring. Uh, definitely in the fall, uh, like we were told when we came back, like practices would be 
a possibility for us. And the only practices we had were athletic pod directed conditioning practices. We were not allowed it on, on our field the entirety of the fall. So it was lack of transparency was a, a big theme throughout the whole two semesters you've been here. And when Colin uh, mentioned, you know, a, a smoking gun, you know, when we got that notification about the waiver for a master's year, that it was like a signal that we wouldn't have a season. It felt like we got these slowly over time, but we weren't ever told we wouldn't have a season. We were just kind of giving hints. Yeah, you were kind of maybe wondering what kind of restrictions are going to be on our season, right? But yeah, but didn't, didn't anticipate this. All right, in my commentary, I made reference to how um, – the Big Ten and Pac-12 parents, coaches, players really rallied together and did change the minds of the equivalent of your Ivy League Council of Presidents. Is there any such effort underway? And part two of that question, anybody chime in, is all hope lost? I mean, is there any hope that given the just the rapidly declining case numbers in this country and illnesses that this decision could, might be reversed. I, I don't think, I think it's, I think it's done. I don't think there's a chance for a reversal. Um, in terms of like a unified voice across the league, there hasn't really been, it's been, you know, a couple of alums from each university that, you know, get together and they make their own like college, like, I guess, uh, petition, if you will. Like we had a, a Brown alum that submitted one to the Ivy League um, I think the Yale baseball captain wrote his own uh, little letter to the Ivy League. So it's been, it's been pretty. But nothing in a coordinated fashion. You haven't talked to your counterpart at, at the any uh, elder captains. Or, it's hard because uh, some of these schools with not allowing, you know, students back, a lot of players didn't come back. So I think Harvard had minimal players uh, that went back to school. I think, I think the same with Princeton and Yale. So it's tough to get any sort of unified voice without, having you know all at least all or most athletes on campus well whoever mentioned it earlier was spot on uh when you talked about how uh, professional sports have their players unions and um you guys really have nobody representing you in any no organized way and and maybe that's uh and we're actually both on a, we're on the student athlete advisory committee for brown and i mean i don't think there's been at a meeting since 2020, like spring of 2020. Um, hmm. We reached out to a student. Too inconvenient? Yeah, it was just, there wasn't really any discussion. We were supposed to be like a group. I mean, there's probably a hundred people in this group and we're supposed to be like, you know, a bridge between the admin, like Ivy League to like other student athletes. And we just, you know, haven't heard anything. Yeah, that's what I was gonna mention earlier. There was no, absolutely no open dialogue between the administrators and the student athletes during this whole process. And like, there was no, we were never made aware of any conversations of any plan that was being formulated or any type of anything like that. So to go off of what our coach said in that tweet that he thinks the Ivy League made this decision a long time ago and they never planned on having a spring season. I firmly agree with that because they never even attempted to reach out to us and see what we had to say even though you had that athlete council yep hmm. all right last question then then I, I invite you guys to stay on we will turn your mics and things back off but I, I would like you to listen to our doctor uh boston he's a, he's actually a brown credentialed epidemiologist um who's a regular contributor and he's a medical research uh mostly medical research right now but um, and you can you can feel free to raise your hand on this. I, I like to self-deprecate every. Was I a little too harsh in my opening comments on the Ivy League? Let me know if you think I was just a tad too harsh. Hmm. Okay, so I don't I don't feel I don't feel quite as uh, like I stuck my neck out as I thought I was doing before that. Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, uh, thank you for your time today. I. Um, you know, I would, I would only advise um, never give up hope. Try to organize if you can. Your voices do matter if you can organize. That's what my work is about, organizing resistance to policies that we don't agree with. You know, it's part of the Democrat process. Some people are for. So if there's any room for that, I would say don't give up hope and try, try, to, try to make a collective voice. It's, it's how things work. And it's, 
and be on it. I know you guys were on Fox News, uh, Fox and Friends. Uh, was it yesterday, uh, uh, Monday morning or yesterday morning? Monday. Who was on the show? Raise your hand. I forget who was on. I, I saw the interview quickly. That was great. Great exposure for you guys. No, wait a minute. I got to ask you. Now, I heard you guys got some harassment for appearing on the dreaded evil Fox station. Is that correct? We did get a little pushback. <laughs> Anon anonymously, granted An that. Oh, not even. They weren't even brave enough to do it uh, out front, huh? It, yeah, mostly anonymously. But I, I guess the main thing I want to say um, is, you know, we're, we're not trying to, like, make light of this pandemic or come across as shallow or anything. Like, we, we respect everything that's happened. Like, you know, we have a heavy heart for everyone that's lost any loved one or anything. But it's just, you know, it's, it's proven it can be done, you know. And I think the, I think the biggest thing is, I think this was a great opportunity for the Ivy League to, you know, showcase their innovation, creativity in a way to make a, like a really safe, like atmosphere to play and then allowing us to come back and also make a safe community. I think it was a very, very well said, much better than I said it, I would have to say. You're much more of a diplomat than I am. Gentlemen, thank you. I hope somehow it gets back. If not, when you're back in play next year. So it sounds like all of you will be back next year, maybe, hopefully. If you apply for grad school and I'll come, I'll come see you play. Um, I did see you guys play two, uh, uh, two years ago when uh, my, my friend Frank Caprio senior and his son played on your team. We went to a Saturday doubleheader game against Harvard. And I, I, I can't remember. I think you, I can't remember what, how that turned out. Was that Brian? I think you split maybe. Okay. that. Yeah, we, we split that one. Yeah. If I remember, but I enjoyed watching you guys play and I hope we'll get a chance to do it again. Thank you, uh, Zach, Charlie, Ray, Jake, Colin and Ryan, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.